The NFL just inadvertently gave the Chiefs an advantage over other teams after one of the biggest rule changes got announced today due to a player they have on the team that can be used as a dual threat in a unique way. So we've got to talk about that after we look at Snead officially becoming a Titan, Clark Hunt responding about his F minus grade, as well as look at the rest of these rule changes that got announced this week. But first, how about those? First up, the Legereus Sneed trade has become official, with Ian Rappaport breaking down terms of his new deal with the Saints, saying the deal is now done. Sneed's getting a new four-year, $76.4 million deal that includes $55 million guaranteed and a $20 million signing bonus. So the Chiefs get a 2025 third-round pick and swapped seventh-round picks with the Titans to have Sneed's $19.8 million cap hit off the books, and in exchange, the Titans get a dog in Legereus Sneed, and Sneed gets paid. A win-win for both teams, though, of course, I do wish the third-round pick that the Chiefs received from the Titans was for this year rather than 2025. Next up, an article just came out that may not have been the best look for Chiefs owner Clark Hunt, or at least that's how some are interpreting this. The article was released by Nate Taylor and Kalen Collar of The Athletic, and in this article, Clark Hunt responded to the F minus grade, the worst grade of any owner in the league in this report, by the way, he received in the NFLPA's annual team report cards. I covered this in much more detail in a previous video, but here's a quick reminder. The results of this survey were conducted from over 1,700 players. 47 of them were from Chiefs players from August to November of 2023. These players were able to speak freely under anonymity, and the main bone to pick with Clark Hunt was what players perceived to be his unwillingness to invest in the facilities via upgrades as well as providing enough staff to adequately take care of players. A source with familiarity of the situation recently told me that the reason why players stay healthy is a lot of them have to go and seek help from other rehab centers. Many players can't get in the training room, but hey, it's not every player. A lot of the starters get priority. For example, former Chiefs linebacker, now with the Saints, Willie Gay Jr. said, quote, I got all the work I needed, but I have heard guys say they won't let me get treatment. They told me, get on the list, which I presume to mean the waiting list, which points back to the fact that Clark Hunt would probably do well to hire more training staff. Now, in regards to upgrades, players were specifically talking about the training facility that's gone roughly 20 years without major renovations. Part of that report mentioned players believed the locker room of the training facility, they spend like six days a week there sometimes, would be renovated after the conclusion of the 2022 season and be finished by the start of the 2023 season. But quote, that promise was not kept by Hunt and the Chiefs. One player said, there's no priority on making our lives better, but we kept making the organization more money. Well, this week, Clark Hunt actually denied that part of the report. He said, quote, I have spoken to some of our veteran players about that, and they've confirmed to me that it was miscommunication. Certainly, I personally never said anything to them about a renovation of the locker room. It was a misunderstanding, which is certainly interesting because some players definitely thought this was communicated or Several players would not have put this in their report. So while that's a bit confusing, Willie Gay Jr. seemed to back up the fact that Clark Hunt did not promise those upgrades to the team within a particular time frame. Quote, no one ever said, hey, you guys get a renovation if you win a Super Bowl. And then Gay continued saying they won a Super Bowl in 2019 and that didn't happen. So as players, we knew we were not getting any renovations. But shit, we were winning Super Bowls. So at the end of the day, how can we argue? Hey, the facility is falling apart, but... We won the second Super Bowl in two years. Well, if you got a former player saying the facility is falling apart, I think it's time to upgrade the facility. Well, it looks like if this new stadium tax vote passes on April 2nd and the stadium's lease is extended for another 25 years, Clark Hunt said they will then, quote, turn their attention to the training facility. The problem is Hunt said that the facility could undergo a major renovation that would be completed by 20 31, but that is the last year of Mahomes' current 12-year contract. So I personally would love to see it happen before then, if at all possible. And then the NFL just issued a bunch of new rule changes for the 2024 season, and one of them tips its hat in favor of the Chiefs 
if they opt to utilize this underrated weapon for the team in this manner. And before we get to that, if you are like I was roughly a year ago, tired of your old mattress, and in 2024 find yourself in need of a new premium fiberglass free mattress customized to the way you sleep and shipped right to your front door, then look no further than to the longest active sponsor of the channel, Bear Mattress. They have a lot of great March sales running right now, so head to bearmattress.com slash HBTC and use code HBTC to get a higher discount than what is being offered on site. My wife and I have personally I've personally been using their Elite Hybrid mattress for over a year now and love the sleep we've been getting so much that we got the Bear Cub mattress for one of our daughters as well. Bear also knows that everybody has different preferences and sleep positions, which is why there's an online quiz you can take to help remove all the guesswork. I sleep on my back and prefer a medium firmness to my mattress, but my wife sleeps on her stomach and prefers a mattress that is more firm, and that's why Bear matched us up with the Elite Hybrid mattress to benefit us both. Then after ordering, they shipped it right to our front door, which allowed us to throw out our old one good riddance and unrolling and unboxing our new one was not only very easy but also instantly upgraded our sleep quality. Part of the reason for that is because their sleep recovery technology uses a salient powered fabric to help you stay cool throughout the night and all mattresses are Green Guard Gold certified, Certi Pure US certified, and EcoFlex fiberglass free which basically means it's as safe and reliable as a Mahomes to Kelsey touchdown in the red zone. Bears mattresses also include free shipping in the US, a 120 night sleep trial giving you three months to make sure you love it, a lifetime warranty, and they even offer financing options and flexible payment plans. So what are you waiting for? I certainly love my quality of sleep with Bear Mattress, and I think you will too. And to upgrade your sleep, go to bearmattress.com slash HBTC and use code HBTC to get 40% off your Bear Mattress for a limited time. Again, this is higher than what's being offered on site, so check it out while you can. All right, yesterday during the NFL's annual league meeting that's taking place in Orlando, Florida from March 24th, through the 27th, several rule changes were made. A team used to be able to challenge twice in a game, and if they were successful on both of those challenges, they would be able to challenge a third time. Well, now all they have to do is have one successful challenge and will be granted a third challenge even if they lose one of their two. The next rule change that happened yesterday is an amendment that allows for an enforcement of a major foul by the offense prior to a change of possession in a situation where there are fouls by both teams. The proposal was made because fouls by the offense in that situation were ignored in the the committee said it wanted, quote, consistency with an effort to enforce all major fouls. Next up, replay assistance will now be permitted to correct certain types of incorrect calls for roughing the passer and intentional grounding. If a ref gets it wrong and it's clear via replay, the replay assistant can actually tell the ref he needs to pick up the flag, which is pretty freaking awesome. The most controversial rule change of the day, though, was when the NFL banned the pivot hip drop tackle, a tackle that reportedly increases injury rates by up to 20%. That type of tackle is now flaggable for 15 yards and a first down, and players can now also be fined for it. Many players are not happy about this, with guys across the league weighing in about it, including a couple of Chiefs players. Safety Justin Reed said it's a horrible change that really makes it difficult for the defense to make a play, especially when a defensive player is running a guy down from behind. Defensive end Charles Aminahue said the only way to tackle now if a player is unable to square up, meaning front on, is to wrap and roll, which is obviously easier said than done. But hey, it's a done deal. The pivot hip drop is now banned. So those were all yesterday. Now there are even more rule changes that took place today, uh, which includes a fun one that could give an advantage to the Chiefs. But before I get to that, some of the other rule changes were as follows. Replay can now be used to determine whether the game clock expired before the ball was snapped, negating judgment calls on delay of game and other things like that. That may have been a change yesterday, to be honest, but I'm just now seeing it today. Then the NFL trade deadline has been moved from after week eight to after week nine. So teams get an extra week to trade a player on their roster or trade for a player from another team. Teams can now also designate up to two players for return when they are placed on injured reserve before the 90 man rosters have to get cut down to 53. The old rule was if a player was moved to IR before cut down day, they had to stay on injured reserve for the entire season. Well, Two can return now during the season, which is great. And that's something that would have benefited players like tight end Jody Fortson and wide receiver Nico Romijo last year, who had to spend the entire year on IR due to being placed on there before roster cutdown day. Then NFL teams can now elevate a quarterback an unlimited number of times from its practice squad to its active list to be the team's emergency third quarterback, which is helpful 
especially for teams that don't want a third QB on the 53-man roster. The league also announced some scheduling updates, which I'll touch on briefly before moving on to the biggest change of the day regarding these new kickoff rules. NFL EVP for media distribution Hans Schroeder announced there will be a Christmas Day doubleheader, despite it being on a Wednesday. Both of those Christmas games will be bid on by networks, so we don't know where or who is hosting the games yet. Uh, but I believe teams that do land these Christmas games will be playing Saturday the week prior rather than Sunday. Well, I'll say this. First off, the NFL lied when they recently said they wouldn't put any Christmas games on the schedule on just any day of the week. And this is also how you know the league cares about money over anything else. Brandon Perna literally tweeted out my thoughts when I saw this announcement. The reason they claimed to ban the pivot hip drop tackle was for player safety, yet they keep adding games that require short weeks for players that adds extra strain to their bodies during these shorter recovery windows. But sure, player safety it is. Even though this Hans Schroeder guy listed a reason for the Wednesday Christmas game as, quote, we've seen really some unprecedented growth. So yeah, money over everything. But after that, Amazon Prime, this is another update, will now have a wild card playoff game this year in the Eagles season opener that's being played in Brazil will air on Peacock, similar to the Chiefs and Dolphins wildcard game just a few months ago. And I'm just going to say it, guys. Get ready for more stuff like this, for more networks to have exclusive paywalled access to games, both regular season and the playoffs. It's only going to happen even more frequently as the years go on. And if all that wasn't enough, the biggest change of the day was the NFL announcing its new kickoff rules, which is not only the biggest changes that have taken place in an offseason in a very long time, but is what I think actually gives an advantage to the Chiefs. More on that in a second. But this was not a complete surprise. The kickoff rule changes because kickoffs last season were boring as hell. 77% of them resulted in a touchback and with the returner having the ability to fair catch and get the ball to 25, it was a no brainer move. Well, that's all got flipped completely on its head this morning when owners voted on and passed a new hybrid kickoff model that originated in the XFL. This new model makes kickoffs more entertaining while still, in theory, helping to lower concussion rates because players will now line up at the 40 in the 35 yard line. Yes, just five yards from each other and can't move until the ball is either caught or reaches the landing zone. The landing zone is the area between the 20 yard line and the goal line. And if the ball lands in that zone, it must be returned. No fair catches allowed unless the ball hits the landing zone and rolls into the end zone. The result is then a touchback to the 20. So that's probably the best case scenario for the kicking team. Ball hits the landing zone, rolls into the end zone, touchback, ball at the 20. Now, if the ball hits before the landing zone, so at the 21, 22, or beyond, uh, or it goes out of bounds, the play is blown dead, and the result is a touchback to the 40. So you don't want that. Then, if the kick lands in the end zone or goes out the back, of the end zone, it's a touchback to the 35. Teams may also have two returners back there and they are free to move around as soon as the ball is kicked. But again, if they catch the ball between the end zone and the 20, they have to return it. This is definitely gonna increase the amount of kick returns that get taken to the house and will ultimately help play a role in the NFL wanting to get the average scores up in these games. Because again, the NFL wants that money. More points scored equals more exciting games equals more cold, hard, Cash. Another change to the kickoffs is that surprise onside kicks are now no longer allowed, as it would basically be impossible based on how players have to line up. However, onside kicks can still be attempted, but only in the fourth quarter, and they must be declared prior to the play happening. The rules of the onside kick, from what I understand, are still the same from the previous year. So now that you know all that, the Chiefs have an X factor on the roster that could actually help in crucial situations on these kickoffs. And you can even say this gives KC an advantage that a lot of teams wouldn't have, and that is because of safety Justin Reed. He's already their backup kicker, having stepped up for Harrison Butker week one of the 2022 season when he sprained his ankle. He's solid at kickoffs and has also kicked some field goals or extra points in a pinch. He's not as accurate, obviously, but he warms up every game for them as well, unless the weather is below 30 degrees. And here's why I think this gives an advantage to the Chiefs. Think about it. Kickoffs are now set up to where there's basically one wall of players once they collide after their five yard separation. And if the returner gets past that wall, all that could be left more times than not between them and scoring a touchdown is the kicker. Well, 
Answer me this one. Would you rather have Harrison Butker trying to chase someone down and make a touchdown saving tackle? Or would you rather have the hit stick himself starting safety Justin Reed who gets paid millions of dollars to level people out there on the football field? Well, the obvious answer is Justin Reed. Some seem hesitant to use Reed out there because they don't want to chance him getting injured on special teams when he's such an asset to the defense. And I certainly do get that mindset and that line of thinking. It makes sense, but if Tobe signs off on it at times and Justin could potentially save a touchdown from happening, that's well worth the risk and its weight in gold in my opinion. Another reason why some would be hesitant for Justin Reed to kick is because he's not as accurate as Harrison Butker. Butker will be able to get the ball in the landing zone effortlessly and basically automatically. Meanwhile, Justin Reed isn't as accurate and could cost the defense if he kicks it short of the landing zone or out of bounds, which would give the opposing team the ball at the 40. However, Justin Reed has already apparently thought that all through, saying the landing zone is a 1,060 square yard area and his soccer background allows him to land a ball into a five by five box constantly, so he doesn't think this is gonna be a problem. Well. I'm certainly intrigued by the idea and would love to get your thoughts on it. I know it's early and the rule changes were just announced today. We don't exactly know how special teams coordinators are going to game plan for this, how to attack it or defend it, but I could see things playing out where Justin Reed is given the opportunity to do kickoffs at times due to his tackling ability and him being a solid last line of defense, especially if they are facing a dangerous returner. And why I'm saying this gives advantage to the Chiefs is how many players on an active roster could also be a backup kicker all across the league. Maybe there's a couple, but Justin Reed is one of the very few. But what are your thoughts on this situation? Do you think that's potentially a good idea or do you think I'm being crazy here and that would never happen? Let me know either way in the comments down below. And before I get out of here, I will say this. Justin Reed seems 100% confident that he could do this. After the announcement of the rule changes were made, he said he'll keep his leg ready and even shared this photo of him kicking during warmups and said, put me in coach. So whether you or I think he should or should not be kicking with the new rules, Justin Reed certainly thinks he can. Anyway, again, let me know your thoughts on this quote unquote advantage that the Chiefs could use this season, as well as your thoughts on all these other rule changes. Let me know what you like, dislike, and extremely, extremely dislike. And until next time, let's go. Let's freaking go. How about those? Yeah.